Well, that's just ridiculous. 10 minutes until the bus leaves. Well, luckily these uh, new electric scooters has arrived in uh, Oslo. This is the new model. A little something for everyone here uh, today. This is uh, just the steering wheel without the wheels, if you're afraid of wheels. new crazy forms of transportation without handle or without wheels is not for me so I uh, thought I'd try out a more traditional mode of transportation called walking what you do is you place uh, one foot in front of the other and then continue thusly and eventually you advance throughout your pathway towards your destination hooray sorry I just crossed this bridge it's a bit noisy here I don't know if you could hear me or not tiny waterfall. It's uh, Easter here in Norway. What I usually do in uh, Easter is uh, go up into the mountains and go skiing. Last year I uh, climbed Uranus Peak in the uh, Jotunheimen National Park. Great adventure but uh, ever since I fractured my calcaneus I've had to try to adapt to the the lifestyle of a cripple slash fat person because I haven't been moving in a while so this Easter I'm home in Oslo, going to the office at the university every day, trying to get some work done. It's very quiet in the city, there's barely any cars, just a few people jogging in the park. But yeah, it's a good time here! So uh, recently we moved into our, finally, we moved into our new offices and I'm taking you guys along! I have finally arrived at the university and what I thought I'd try to do is fly the drone up to check if there's anyone at the office. I wouldn't encourage anyone to do this because it's probably illegal but we're on university property right now so I could argue that this is all for research, of course. I actually checked up on the drone laws in Texas when I was there last year and one of the few places that it was okay to fly a drone was on the university property so I don't really think Texas laws are anything like Norwegian laws but oh well here goes didn't see anyone, did you? Oh, it's dark here. Oh, well, here we go. Elevator time. We're going all the way up here to the Center for Computation and Science Education. As you can see, there are all other things there. High energy physics, the medicine chemistry institute place. So many weird things there. We share a floor with the theory department. Here we are. Well, immediately when you enter, that's the main entrance. I used a secret elevator. Uh, you have this little uh, reception area with a few 4K TVs that you need. When you have a center with infinite money, then you need those. And then here you have these really nice uh, whiteboards, and they're great for giving ramps as an aid, a visual tool for random passing people in the hallway. Hey, guys! You wouldn't believe what they're teaching kids in school these days. Say if you have a function, 
and you want to compute the derivative of it, what they write is an apostrophe. Preposterous. What the hell is this? I was having, uh, you know, a student the other day as a private tutor and I was writing the normal notation. But he was like, whoa, whoa, what, what is that? We wrote the apostrophe notation. And don't get me started on the whatever the hell this is. Good times. Everybody likes a good rat. So here is the main kitchen area. It's a huge space. Now, this used to be just one hallway, one corridor section of there. And there's, they're going to put plants in these uh, boxes. So only the professors with their offices had this magnificent view. This is uh, where I was uh, flying uh, the drone, trying to peek uh, in. Uh, and because uh, the center has infinite money, we have a giant projector, another giant projector. There is a third giant projector. Of course, another 4K TV. And in this meeting room, another giant projector and so on. It goes on infinitely. And in there is Anders, the only guy I couldn't see through the windows. I hide his face so his privacy is protected. I was walking over to the kitchen to make some coffee, but then somebody already made it. Anders doesn't drink coffee. That's not Professor Anders, by the way. That's Anders, the graduate student. He's, he's very good. If you've seen my other film from uh, the Academy of Sciences, Professor Anders, remember? Not the same Anders. There are like five Anderses here. I also know how to speak English. Speaking of coffee, I had to bring my, my own cup from home because we don't have any cups here yet. I, I talked to the center administrator about it and she said that, well, the designer isn't finished putting the logos on the cup yet. I could do that. That's one of the problems you get when you have a center with infinite money. Uh, I actually did design a cup because this other uh, guy, Robert, he was there. And I thought, hey, I, I could do the cups, I'll do it quickly. You know, I'll just draw, you know, Robert and with the computer and a neural net. That's what you do, right? And then put the logo on, no problem. And I actually did. And it arrived today. All right, here we are. This is uh, our study research area. Here's my spot. These are remnants from uh, my past life as an uh, economist. Here is the main attraction. All right, here we go. <gasps> Amazing, look. There's Robert. He's written a Python program in Python 2 that says hello's world. Here's an artificial neural network and the name of the center. Center for Computing and Science Education. How glorious. This is Robert's place. He usually sleeps on his desk a lot, obviously. Jesus uh, Christ. Intense simulations. Can you believe it? There are other people here in the Easter uh, as well. So I'm going to hide in this little room. Here. here, there's also a screen. It's a bit later in the evening here at uh, the Center for Computations in Science Education. I'd like to briefly mention what I'm what I'm working uh, working at for my my master thesis uh, project. Uh, I mentioned earlier in some of my other videos that I'm doing uh, many body uh, quantum theory, and what I'm working on. In particular is um, the time development of these many-body quantum states. Traditionally one has been most interested in computing the ground state of a quantum system because then you know the most likely configuration or state for such a system to be in and the ground state is the one with the lowest energy. There is this thing called a quantum computer that people are trying to build and uh, in order to build a quantum computer, you need somewhat stable quantum states. When you do time development, as I am doing, of quantum states, you can use these method methods to gauge whether a system is stable enough to you, you use as a qubit, a quantum bit in a quantum computer. Things that I'm working on right now is nowhere near being able to do or something like that, but the methods the motivation behind developing these methods is to someday be able to simulate quantum circuitry and thereby be able to determine what types of quantum systems will work well 
uh, to build an actual quantum computer of larger size. Because one of the main problems is uh, quantum decoherence. The, the state is interacting with uh, everything else, uh, the surrounding environment, and is disturbed and is not able to store any viable information any longer in the quantum states, which is a problem. And th this is one of the main reasons that they cool quantum computers as much as they do uh, to about 3 Kelvin or so, so that they are absolutely sure that nothing really happens, so they have better control over the quantum states. Doing quantum antibody methods is uh, very, uh, it's, a, it's a bit difficult, it's a tough uh, problem, it scales very rapidly in computing uh, uh, complexity. Uh, so you need some clever approximations and what we are trying to do is to take one of these methods, which is very good, it's called the coupled cluster method, and try to make a time dependent version of it. And we are succeeding, I'd say. And we are we are kind of playing with toy systems, uh, electrons confined to, to some very simple potential, so they'll stay within uh, some uh, limited space. And this is called a quantum dot or an artificial atom, where you have a harmonic oscillator potential to confine your uh, electrons. I'd like to visualize this for you now, actually, because I just ran a simple simulation with the two electrons in a two-dimensional potential, so you can actually see a bit what's uh, going on with them. All right, so this is the first thing uh, I want to show you. Uh, we have two particles. That's the end. You don't really need to know what all these things are, but the first thing that happens is that we um, compute uh, the ground state of the system, that is the lowest energy state, and we get the ground state energy. And this uh, little figure here shows the uh, initial configuration of that ground state. What you're looking at is the uh, single particle density of the system. So, uh, and this is uh, in, in uh, polar uh, coordinates. So um, it's all uh, circular. It is not. It's not symmetrical, but it's. Um, it, it's easier to model these uh, things uh, like this, so you can imagine that some some sort of potential is confining the particles here, and this is uh, where you'll most likely find them, kind of where the where the yellow colors is. And then we do the time development, and it's not quite finish, uh, finished, finished, finished. <laughs> it's not quite finished, but it will be uh, soon, and then uh, we'll see. All right, here we are, it's done. So as you can see, for I made uh, a Python script uh, that for every fifth time step of my simulation outputs an image of the, of the, the density of the state. And I have stitched all those together into a GIF or GIF if you're an idiot. And uh, we can open this one now and see how the develop the system develops over time. Here we go. What we are actually doing is, in order to disturb the system, system and make it uh, behave in this way, we need to we are we are simulating a shooting it with a laser actually, and uh, yeah, I think these simulations are quite cool. So you see that it's pushed to the side. It's really quite something. It's um, it's it's very difficult to make something cool that you can visualize. In, uh, in quantum mechanics because most of the time you just program for a month and then you get a number like an energy or some other kind of observable and um, yeah, so it's difficult to make these really neat things there are a bunch of people here at the center that does um, molecular dynamics and that's uh, essentially simulating you know, a million particles uh, in a box and they have these really neat visualizations of tools that they use and it's, it's nice to watch. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying this second round now. A bit weird. <laughs>
I hope it's correct. <laughs> I hope I haven't showed you anything wrong. 